Hi everybody! In today's lecture, I'd like to talk to you about thermoelectrics, especially as applied to nanoscience. Now, in a previous lecture I posted, you should have learned a little bit already about the thermoelectric effect, which is also called the Seebeck effect. But to summarize it here, basically you have a temperature difference or gradient in a material, and that causes a voltage difference in the material. And this is because the charge carriers diffuse from the hot side to the cold side. Remember that the hot charge carriers move faster than the cold ones. And so that causes this separation of charges. And then that separation of charge induces, of course, a voltage. Now this voltage can be expressed as delta V, which is equal to minus S delta T. Here S is the Seebeck coefficient, and delta T is the temperature difference. Now, you can see here in this chart um, some values of the Seebeck coefficient here, and you can see that they range um, from about on the order of 0.1 millivolts per Kelvin to maybe 1 millivolt per Kelvin, depending on the material here in this chart of these materials. So this effect is always present, but remember that it's not always useful, because most of the time, as we just see from this chart, S is a small number. By the way, S is temperature dependent, and so the, these Seebeck effect coefficients are for a given temperature. Now you can use this physics to apply a voltage to heat or cool something, or you can use it in reverse and use a temperature gradient to create power. And that's where all the excitement is, because of course we have a lot of waste heat generated at power plants and in cars and all our, uh, all our gadgets, and we'd like to harness that waste heat and make it do something useful, like create electricity for us. Now, a good thermoelectric material needs a high electrical conductivity in order to prevent dual heating, and it also needs a low thermal conductivity in order to keep that heat from leaking backwards. This is summarized in what's called a figure of merit, which is often symbolized by capital Z. Now, it's usually in the literature cited as Z times the temperature, or ZT, and not just Z by itself, okay? Um, and of course, as we said, Z is temperature dependent. So ZT is equal to S squared sigma over K times T. So Z is equal to S squared sigma over K. Remember, S is that Seebeck coefficient that I already told you about. Sigma is the electrical conductivity, and K here is the thermal conductivity. This slide shows you some power efficiency, power generation efficiency, as a function of Z times T here in this right-hand plot. And of course, over here, this is uh, Thomas Johann Seebeck, the physicist that helped discover this. So basically, as we stated, we'd like to be able to use these thermoelectric devices and harness our waste heat to get useful power. So in order to do that, what you have to do is to look at your figure of merit ZT, right, and look at its generating efficiency as plotted here on the vertical axis. Now you can see that as ZT increases, so does the generating efficiency. And of course, it's better for larger temperature gradients. Now, if you can get ZT up high enough, you start to approach the efficiencies that we have for our regular heat engines, okay? And that's really the goal. We'd like to take that waste heat and then use that waste heat again and get some energy out of it. And if we can have it approach the efficiency of the engines that we already have, then that would be great. So what are some of the candidates for these materials? Now, prior to the 1990s, there were just three main classes of promising thermoelectric materials. Those are bismuth telluride, right, lead telluride, and then silicon germanium, of course, alloys of all three of these things. Each one of these materials had something that was holding it back and keeping its figure of merit a little too low to just pop right into use in everyday kind of commercial activities. So bismuth telluride, for example, really wasn't great at the high temperatures. It was better below 450 Celsius, and that's because it has good electrical conductivity but poor thermal conductivity. Now, of course, with lead telluride, you've got all kinds of safety and environmental concerns. Lead is already a material that we try to minimize the use of because of, you know, issues with getting it in water and in our air and, you know, lead poisoning. 
In silicon germanium alloys, the figure of merit just wasn't high enough. It was really good, though, at about 1300 Celsius. That was its primary operating um, temperature. So you can see here in this plot that was taken from thermoelectric materials, energy conversion between heat and electricity, um, you can see here a timeline plot of how far we've come with thermoelectrics. On the left-hand side in this purple region are the three conventional materials that I just told you about, right? Um, and you can see that their figure of merits prior to, say, 1990 or so were less than one. And so that was not very promising, right? The efficiencies, as we saw in the previous plot, for less than one were pretty low. Then there was an explosion, a lot of interest and research into this area. And you can see that the figures of merit since that time have gone up quite a bit. And now we have some really high figures of merit over here, um, you know, at 2.5 to 3 range, right? And so that would be the goal because then, um, going back to that previous plot, we could have a good power generation efficiency. But why this took off, part of the reason this took off, is because of the explosion of the research into nanotechnology. If you look at some of these entries here, for example, you can see that there's nanomaterials on this plot and that those nanomaterials raised the figure of merit for that. Now, of course, that's not all, the whole story. There are also some discoveries in uh, bulk materials. Um, in uh, particular, up here at the right-hand corner, the um, tin selenide, was uh, an advance. It's um, looking really good right now. But why would the nano explosion have helped the advance of these thermoelectric materials? Well, that's because of some of the materials, the thermal properties of materials that we've discussed in previous lectures. Nanoscale structures have been shown to have low thermal conductivities because of the enhanced scattering at the surfaces, right? So if you have a nanoscale particle, that shuts down the long mean free paths, and if they don't have as long of a mean free path, the um, thermal carriers uh, are give, give rise to a lower uh, K value for that because of the scattering off the sides of the particle. The particle itself is smaller than the mean free path in the bulk material, in other words, and that suppresses um, the thermal conductivities. Some of them, though, have very large Seebeck coefficients. Uh, due to their unique electronic structures and their densities of states that we've already talked about. So what are some of the nanoscale candidates for thermoelectrics? Well, graphene stirred up a lot of interest. It has a high Seebeck coefficient and a high thermal conductivity, but it also, unfortunately, has a high, um, I'm sorry, it has a high Seebeck coefficient S and a high electrical conductivity sigma, and so that's good for the figure of merit. But unfortunately, it has a high thermal conductivity, which brings the figure of merit down, as we saw. Now, some groups are working on overcoming this difficulty by doping it and doing some other things, and so work is continuing in that area. There's also been a lot of work in the idea of a super lattice. So a super lattice is a layered material, and the layer thicknesses are on the order of nanometers. So that would make it fall under the class of nanotechnology, and these are being tested. Now, a lot of these super lattices are using some of the conventional materials that we already talked about, you know, the bismuth telluride, the lead telluride, the silicon germanium alloys. But they're taking those materials and putting them in layers uh, on the order of nanometers to try and enhance some of the properties that they like. There's also been some interest into some quantum dot super lattices, and this of course uses those conventional thermoelectric materials, but on the nanoscale in quantum dots, and that can help increase ZT, um, and it can also help if the material cost itself is high, because then you would need less of the material in order to, um, but you could still get the maximum benefit from that material, even though you have to use less of it. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope it made sense to you, and um, I'll see you around. I'll see you in class.